Good day, grade 10 learners. This is Teacher Lester, aka Sir Les, and I welcome you all to another fun and meaningful learning. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for you to be updated of new uploaded videos. For today's video, we will be talking about laws concerning national health problems. This is actually discussed in the second quarter of your module. So what are we waiting for? Let's get this discussion started. The title of our discussion is Health Trends, Issues, and Concerns in the National Level. So, for us to be well-directed, here are the most essential learning competencies. The learner discusses the existing health-related laws, explains the significance of the existing health-related laws in safeguarding people's health, critically analyzes the impacts of current health trends, issues, and concerns, and recommend ways of managing health issues, trends, and concerns. We will first discuss the health-related laws. There are actually nine health-related laws, and one of these is the Consumer Act of the Philippines, or Republic Act number 7394. It is a national policy which aims to protect the interests of the consumers and buyers of products and services, promote consumers' general welfare, and to set and maintain standards of product for both the business and industrial sectors. The Consumer Act covers the quality and safety of different products like food, drugs, cosmetics, and devices. The policy also promotes the protection of citizens against hazardous substances that may be on sale. Hence, Proper labeling and fair packaging shall be required for all the products being sold. The second law is the Traditional and Alternative Medicine Act of 1997 or also known as Republic Act No. 8423. It is an act creating the Philippine Institute of Traditional and Alternative Healthcare or PITAHC PTAC to accelerate the development of traditional and alternative healthcare in the Philippines, providing for traditional and alternative healthcare development fund and for other purposes. The policy also identifies medicinal plants in the country which are readily available. These medicinal plants shall be taken care of by different agencies. The third one is the Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Act of 2012 or also known as Republic Act No. 10354. The Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Act of 2012, also known as the Reproductive Health Law of RH Law or RH Law, is a law in the Philippines that guarantees universal access to methods such as contraception, fertility control, sexual education, and maternal care. Let us dig deeper about this act. What is reproductive health? It refers to the state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease relating to the reproductive system and to its functions and processes. This implies that people can have a responsible, safe, consensual, and satisfying sex life, that they have the capability to reproduce and the freedom to decide if, when, and how often to do so. Now let's talk about pillars of reproductive health. There are actually four pillars of reproductive health. That's the informed choice, respect for life, birth control, and responsible parenthood. Let's talk about Pillar 1 first, which is informed choice. To ensure the health of the mother and the child, 
an effective and quality reproductive health care services which are ethically and medically safe, legal, accessible, and affordable shall be given primacy to them. Pillar number two, respect for life. The Act recognizes that abortion is illegal and punishable by law. However, mothers who will be identified to have aborted an unborn child will be served with post-abortive treatment and counseling in a humane, non-judgmental, and compassionate manner. Pillar number three, birth control. Reproductive health care, information, and supplies shall be made available most especially to poor beneficiaries. The Act provides that the government must respect the citizens' individual preferences and choices of family planning method. Pillar number four, responsible parenthood. Couples determine their ideal family size. In addition, the government shall equip each parent with needed information in all aspects of family life reproductive health, and this pillar. Now, what is responsible parenthood? Parenthood is about raising children and supporting their needs financially, morally, teaching them good values and giving them love and care. It is one of the most important duties in our society. Parents do the following respond to the needs and aspirations of the family and children determine and plan the desired number the spacing and timing of their children based on their health status social cultural and economic concerns and religious convictions and also plan and work to meet the goals of their family going back to health related laws we have number four Philippine AIDS Prevention and Control Act of 1998 or also known as Republic Act No. 8504. Republic Act No. 8504 is an act promulgating policies and prescribing measures for the prevention and control of HIV or AIDS in the Philippines, instituting a nationwide HIV or AIDS information and education program, establishing a comprehensive HIV or AIDS monitoring system, strengthening the Philippine National AIDS Council, and for other purposes. So talking more of this, what is human immunodeficiency virus or HIV? It is a viral infection that attacks and slowly destroys the immune system of the infected person that leads to immune deficiency. It is a progressive and can lead to lack of body defense to all kinds of infection, including those that do not normally infect man and can also lead to cancer susceptibility. How do you get or transmit HIV? You can only get HIV by coming into direct contact with certain body fluids. These fluids are blood, semen, rectal fluids, vaginal fluids, and breast milk. How do you get or transmit HIV? HIV is transmitted by unprotected sex, passing from infected mother to baby, sharing contaminated injecting equipment, and contaminated blood transfusion. And HIV is not acquired or transmitted by insect bites, toilet seats, Kissing, sharing eating utensils, and touching. Let's check out the HIV status in the Philippines. The first HIV case in the Philippines was reported in 1984. Around 2007, the DOH noted a rise in the epidemic as new infections started showing a steady spike and shifted from sex workers to men who have sex with men, or MSM, and people who inject drugs. Madolzura Cortez, died in 1992, was the first Filipino AIDS victim who came out in the open to tell about her life and how she acquired the AIDS virus. Talking about AIDS, 
what is acquired immune deficiency syndrome it is a condition characterized by a combination of signs and symptoms caused by hiv contracted from another person aids attacks and weakens the body's immune system making the person who contracted the disease susceptible to other life-threatening infections and that is all for hiv and aids let's go back to related laws number five is national blood services act of 1994 or ra number 7719 republic act number 7719 promotes voluntary blood donation to provide sufficient supply of safe blood and to regulate blood banks. This act aims to inculcate public awareness that blood donation is humanitarian act. The National Voluntary Blood Services Program or NVBSP of Department of Health is targeting the youth as volunteers in its blood donation program. In line with RA number 7719, it aims to create public consciousness on the importance of blood donation in saving the lives of millions of Filipinos. Now let's proceed to number 6 law, which is the Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012, or also known as Republic Act number 10175. The Act aims to address legal issues concerning online interactions. With the advancement of technology, there are various platforms where you may express yourself. This may do both good and harm to you. Cyber refers to a computer or a computer network, the electronic medium in which online communication takes place. Consequently, Cybercrime is simply a crime committed in cyberspace. To protect the citizens from this concern, the government mandated Republic Act number 10175 or the Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012 that mandates the prohibition of cybersex, child pornography, unsolicited commercial communications, and computer related identity theft. And now let's proceed to the law number 7, which is the National Environmental Awareness and Education Act of 2008, also known as Republic Act number 9512. This act provides the promotion of environmental awareness through environmental education, which shall encompass environmental concepts and principles, environmental laws, the state of international and local environment and local environmental best practices and threats of environmental degradation and its impact on human well-being, the responsibility of the citizenry to the environment and the value of conservation, protection and rehabilitation of natural resources and the environment. Law number 8 is the Seat Belts Use Act of 1999, or also known as Republic Act number 8750. This act aims to secure and safeguard its citizenry, particularly the passengers and drivers of private and public motor vehicles, from the ruinous and extremely injurious effects of vehicular accidents. The policy includes the mandatory wearing of seatbelt devices by the drivers and front seat passengers of private and public motor vehicles. And the last health-related law is the Comprehensive Dangerous Act of 2002 or also known as Republic Act No. 9165. The Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002 or RA number 9165 safeguards the well-being of its citizenry, particularly the youth, from the harmful effects of dangerous drugs on their physical and mental well-being, and to defend the same against acts or omissions detrimental to their development and preservation. In view of the foregoing, the state needs to enhance further the efficacy of the law against dangerous drugs, it's being one of today's more serious social ills. 
Here are some unlawful acts that can be subjected to penalties and fines. Importing of dangerous drugs and or controlled precursors and essential chemicals. Selling, trading, administering, dispensing, delivering, distributing, and transporting dangerous drugs and or controlled precursors and essential chemicals. Manufacturing of dangerous drugs and or controlled precursors and essential chemicals. Manufacturing or delivery of equipment, instrument, apparatus, or other paraphernalia for dangerous drugs and or controlled precursors and essential chemicals. Maintaining a drug den, drive, or resort. Possessing dangerous drugs, equipment, instrument, apparatus, or other paraphernalia. Possessing dangerous drugs during parties, social gatherings, or meetings. Cultivating or culturing plants classified as dangerous drugs or sources of such. And unnecessary prescribing dangerous drugs. Let's proceed to the impact of current health trends, issues, and concerns. First Act or Policy the Consumer Act of the Philippines Issues slash concerns Mislabeled food, drug, device, or cosmetic Misbranding of any food, drug, device, or cosmetic Misleading health information Fraudulent promotion, sales, or advertisement of various products Sale or offering for sale of any drug or device beyond its expiration or expiry date and online false advertising. Impact Improper use of medicine may worsen existing health conditions of the person using medicines. People are misled with the wrong information about medicine and negative experience for customers. Second policy Traditional and Alternative Medicine Act of 1997 Issues slash concerns Medical quackery, lack of traditional and alternative healers. Impact, health conditions are not properly assessed or diagnosed. People who cannot afford to seek medical assistance in hospitals are not given other options such as traditional and alternative healers. Act number three, the Philippine AIDS Prevention and Control Act of 1998. Issues slash concerns Discrimination in the workplace Discrimination in schools Restrictions on travel and habitation Discrimination in hospitals and health institutions Inhibition from public service Denial or burial services Impact It may lead to depression and other psychological problems People with AIDS are afraid to come out and seek medical assistance, thus elevating the risk. Act or Policy Number 4 Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Act Issues slash Concerns Abortion Family Planning Use of Contraceptives Premarital Sex Teenage Pregnancy Sexual Transmitted Infections and HIV or AIDS Violence against women and children Impact Issues on morality Population explosion that may lead to scarcity of resources Act or Policy Number 5 National Blood Services Act of 1994 Issues or Concerns Inadequate Blood Banks Few voluntary donors. Impact Lives are at risk. Act or policy number six Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012. Issues or concerns Cyber sex, child pornography, cyber squatting, hacking, identity theft, illegal access data, libel. Impact Violation of human rights, issues on morality, violation of privacy. Act or policy number seven, 
National Environmental Awareness and Education Act of 2008 Issues slash Concerns Improper Disposal of Garbage Pollution Impact Long-Term Health Effects Food and Water Contamination Act or Policy Number 8 Seat Belts Use Act of 1999 RA Number 8750 Issues Slash Concerns Not Comfortable Never Having Gotten Used to Seat Belts Impact Great Risk of Severe Injuries Life Threatening Accidents Stress Act or Policy Number 9 Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002 Issues Slash Concerns Law is not implemented properly Lack of parental guidance Increased incidence of crime Impact Violent behavior and happy family Depression Loss of interest in favorite activities So those are the impact of current health trends, issues, and concerns Now, last concern is what government agencies are tasked to implement and enforce the law? First one is the Department of Trade and Industry or the DTI. It advances consumer rights and welfare. Second one is the Department of Agriculture or DA. It promotes agricultural development. Third one is the Department of Health or DOH. It promotes quality health services. Fourth one is the Department of Education or DEPED, ensures consumer education and information. Fifth one is the Bureau of Food and Drugs or BFAD. It enforces laws and regulations concerning relating to food. Sixth one is the Banco Central ng Pilipinas or BSP, provides an effective redress mechanism to financial consumers who feel have been aggrieved with conduct products and services. Seventh one is the Securities and Exchange Commission or SEC. Assures sound standards for financial performance. And the last one is the DOJ or Department of Justice. Acts as the focal agency in formulating and implementing law enforcement investigation and prosecution strategies in curbing cybercrime and cyber-related offenses nationwide. So those are the health-related laws and health issues and concerns in the national level. Here is your performance task. A slogan on drug prevention. You are going to make a slogan about helping remind young people to avoid dangerous drugs. Use not more than 12 words. Write it on a band paper, then capture it or make an electronic slogan using apps. Make it meaningful and creative. Submit your output on the Google Classroom. That's all for today class and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, share it to your friends, and don't forget to subscribe and hit notification bell for you to be updated of new uploaded videos. This has been Sir Les saying, less dream, and make it happen. That's all grade 10 learners. See you all on my next video. Goodbye.